Lord of Gods and the haughty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver, let's go, we follow.
Tonto helped the driver into the coach, the Lone Ranger started the vehicle toward Austin. Get up there! Come on! Get up! Later at the governor's mansion, which they reached under cover of darkness, the Lone Ranger and Tonto listened as the governor spoke. Secretary of State Seward promised Monsieur Lamont safe passage to the border. The Montez Hacienda and the Nuevo Laredo, just across the border, he's to wait for an escort detachment sent by Maximilian to safeguard him to Mexico City. My orders are to see Emperor Maximilian. I dare not turn back. Yet events have shown from here in is most dangerous for you, even with a military escort, Monsieur. Oh, if there were only some other way. I, I have an idea, Governor. If Monsieur Lamar is willing, I suggest he give up the private coach, dress in western clothes, Ride horseback with Toro and Mies in the way of Laredo, whereas his hirelings wouldn't be watching for three seemingly ordinary riders. That's a great idea, sir. I am most willing, but, of course... Well, sir? The mask, monsieur. It will attract attention, and I... I'll uh, disguise my features and ride without my mask. Fine, fine. You and Monsieur Lamont are about the same size and build. You might pass for brothers. Oh, I'm relieved that you and Tardo are willing to take the responsibility of safeguarding Napoleon's emissary. I know he'll be safe in your hands. We'll do everything possible to see him safely to the Mexican military escort, Governor. We'll leave at dawn for the border. That same night in a cabin outside the town of Austin, a Mexican officer dressed in western clothes paced the floor as he talked strongly to a group of sullen-faced men. You, Senor Pete. There were four of you, but you turn and ride away because two hombres come down the slope firing at you. The two hombres you're talking about aren't like ordinary couples, Captain. When I saw one of them wore a black mask and rode a white stallion, and that the other was an engine on a paint, I decided it was time to get away from their problem. And what is there about the mask man in Indian you fear, senor? Well, if you hang around in Texas long enough, Captain, you'll learn a lot about him. He's known as the Lone Ranger. Those two hombres are dynamite. Ah, I have heard of the Lone Ranger. Yeah, well, let me tell you, sir. With them in the picture, it's going to be tough for you to get to that emissary. Don't go right in We must get to him before Emperor Maximilian's detachment of guards meet him. He is certain to carry a sealed dispatch from Napoleon III to the Emperor stating France's intentions. Well, how are you planning to do it? Those of you who are still able to ride will watch at the edge of town for the departure of the emissary's coach from Austin. Yeah. I will go ahead to Nuevo Laredo to my hidden camp, where a squad of anti-imperialist Mexican soldiers are waiting. Send word to me there where the emissary will wait for the imperial guards. We'll do the rest. All right. At dawn, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left with the emissary, who was dressed in western clothes. The journey to Nuevo Laredo, a Mexican town just across the Rio Grande, was made without further incident. Upon showing his credentials, the emissary was well received by Senor Montez at his hacienda, where the Frenchman was to wait for the Imperial Guards. Meanwhile, Pete arrived at the captain's camp to make a report. Oh, 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 oh. Lucky for you, Captain, I decided to have one of our men go right into town and watch the governor's mansion. He saw three riders leave at dawn. One was riding a white stallion. The other was an engine. And the third? He looked like an ordinary rancher. But after we waited a long time and the coach didn't leave, it suddenly came to me that the lone ranger slipped something over on us. Huh? I'm sure the third rider was the Frenchman dressed in western clothes. Ah, that is possible be a clever way to resume the journey without causing suspicion. Yeah. Well, we trailed the three of them to Hacienda on the edge of Nuevo Laredo. I can take you there when you want to go. Uh, the sun will soon be setting, and we'll go then face the emissary. As for the Lone Ranger and the Indian, they will be shot for interfering with our plans. <laughs> falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Because champions are made not born. Yes, sir. Get on your 
way? Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. When you have your eyes on the stars, it's good to know champions are made, not born. Take basketball champion Bob Cousy, spectacular forward of the Boston Celtics. When Bob was just a lad of five, he practiced on the family drive, learned to pass, to shoot, to think, and gave himself this one big break. He ate his Wheaties every flake. Today, Bob sparks that Boston team, still eats his Wheaties with fruit and cream. Champion Bob Cousy got together with Wheaties when he was five years old, 20 years ago. It's steady going with Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Come on, Bob, try it right in there. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Voilà, it is so. But, senor... The Capitan is most clever, mon ami. It is 
much better this way. Tidy, senor, to a chair. Now, senor Emissary, I want the dispatch you are carrying to Maximilian from Napoleon. There is no dispatch. I have said enough. I speak no more. Tidy then, senor. Then I shall force him to talk. Two Mexican soldiers stepped forward and grasped the Lone Ranger by either arm. For a moment, anger got the better of him. Voila! Do this! Go! And this! Go! And this! We! I stop it! Hold it or I'll treat you, Percy! I do not argue with guns. Wait, Senor P. Do not kill him yet. But from now on, I'll show sure keep him covered. Hold your hands high, mister. Put him up! Voila! You men, get up. Search him. We shall hold the guns ready. The Lone Ranger submitted to the search, which produced nothing. He realized he had to pretend to be the emissary to protect Senor Montez and hoped he might prolong matters until Tonto and the troops arrived. The Mexican captain was fast becoming angry. Come back! We have found nothing. Make him talk, Captain. Make him tell what he has to say to Maximilian. See, we shall force him to talk. Speak up, Senor Emissary. What message do you bring? I have nothing to say. Ah! Time to adjourn! Then we search the entire hacienda for the dispatch he must have carried. After trying the Lone Ranger, considerable time was spent by the soldiers as they made a thorough search of the many rooms, but without success. Finally, the captain spoke again. Wait for you for nothing. Absolutely nothing. I told you to force him to talk, Captain. He must have memorized the message for the Emperor. I say beat him till he does tell you. Uh, that is not so good. If he is beaten into insensibility... Well, a might... little slapping around might help. He can't be so brave as he makes out to be. Uh, I shall try. Tell us the message. No. Where's the dispatch? You. <laughs> Look, he's trying to break loose. Acting brave won't get you anything, mister. Yeah, I did not think a Frenchman would be so obstinate. Let me bang him around. Get something from them and know the reason why. No, we have wasted much time. If the dawn comes early, it will soon be getting light. Well, what of it? I shall give him until dawn to speak out. If he does not, he will be shot. He will have time to think things over in the company of his host. Come along. The captain and his men left the room, but the Lone Ranger saw guards watching through the windows. Senor Montez was the first to speak. Senor. Why do you not tell them you are not the emissary? They threaten to kill you if I tell them that. I'll keep up the pretense and try to do credit to the emissary until help comes. But it may not come, senor. Soon it will be light. They will shoot you. I shall tell them. No. Capitan! Capitan! Why do you call, senor? This man is not the emissary. That is the truth. If you will... your lies in your throat, senor, we are not interested in what you tell us. Does not believe me. We'll hope for the best. That's all we can do. Later, when the rays of the rising sun shone over the horizon, the captain and his men returned to the room in which the captives waited. Perhaps you are ready to talk now, Senor Emissary. No. Untie him and bring him outside. All right. The soldiers surrounded the Lone Ranger and walked him outside. Captain's directions, they went behind the hacienda, then stopped for further orders. Now what, Captain? We shall prove this French emissary a coward, Senor Pete, in front of these soldiers. We shall spread the word that Napoleon sent a coward to deal with the Emperor. What do you plan to do? It is 50 yards from here to the river bluff, under which there is a sandy ledge. Yeah, you had us check on that a while ago. This hombre will be given a chance. He is brave. He will walk toward the edge of the bluff. I shall fire two shots over his head. After that, I shall command the soldiers to shoot a volley, to shoot to kill. <laughs> if he is a coward, he will run like a scared rat. Start now, Senor Emissary. We kill that. Slowly, the Lone Ranger walked forward. The first shot rang out. The masked man knew that walk or run, he had no chance in spite of what the captain had said. He was determined not to act the coward in front of the leering soldiers. The second shot sounded, with perspiration beating his forehead. The Lone Ranger moved on. He instinctively braced himself for the volley which he expected to follow. Then... The Lone Ranger flung himself to the ground. 
sound as many shots were heard. Then he realized the shots had come from a different direction. Yes, Tonto. Thank heaven you got here. Give me a gun. Uh, yeah. Just wait. Come on. Uh. Lone Ranger and Tonto gave their attention to helping in the fight. The American troopers had taken the captain and his men completely by surprise. Before long, a bugle call indicated that the battle was successfully ended. As the Mexican renegades and the gunmen helping them threw down their guns, the Emperor's Imperial Guards appeared. The Emissary's Imperial Escort has arrived. Uh-huh. We'll go inside, Tonto. The troopers will handle this now. Later, inside the hacienda, Senor Montez spoke with feeling to the Lone Ranger. Senor, you are magnificent. You save not only the honor of the Emperor Maximilian, but also of the French emissary. We, oui, I am much in your debt, monsieur. So frankly, I felt the honor of the United States was at stake. The promise made to safely deliver you, Monsieur Lamont, to Maximilian's escort had to be upheld. I hope your journey from here to Mexico City is a pleasant one. Thank you, monsieur. The Imperial Guards have taken the Capitan and his men into custody. The American troopers are taking back the American gunmen. Here are your guns, senor. Very good, and thank you, sir. Tonto and I will return to the United States now. Someday, senor, we'll meet you again, and you too, Monsieur Lamont. Adios. Hasta la vista. Adios, monsieur. Monsieur Montez, that man, he is such as I have never met before. Who is he? One whom both Maximilian and your Emperor Napoleon III would no doubt desire to have in their service, senor emissary. But his loyalty is all for his own country. Yes, he is one great Americano, who is known across the border as the Lone Ranger.